Hi, it's Burns Hargis here for another edition of Inside OSU, and we have a very special guest this time, and I know you're going to love it, especially in the midst of all these, this chaotic presidential race we have going. We have none other than the great political reporter of ABC television and uh, radio for many years, Ann Compton, and welcome to OSU. Well, Mr. President, thank you so much. <laughs> it's a nice, it, the political year is so chaotic. I told uh, the students that I wanted to come talk about Presidents, politics, the press, and pandemonium. <laughs> That's a great, nice alliteration there. Well, let's uh, let's move into today and and this remarkable election we're having. And well, both sides are pretty fascinating. I, with uh, you would have never dreamed a Donald Trump or a Bernie Sanders would. Uh, be garnering the kind of support they are. Well, how do you explain all this? What the short explanation that I have brought as part of my remarks and my uh, opportunities to talk to the OSU community and the uh, and the students is that modern technology, modern media, uh, the quick little uh, digital way that so much reporting is done now, has put incredible power into the hands of citizens who can go out with their cell phone catch the uh, Boston Marathon bombing on their cell phones, uh, or students in Tahrir Square can blow the whistle on a whole uh, Egyptian government. But uh, when you put those same tools into the hands of politicians, they suddenly have a way to go straight to the American people in a, w in a way that American people really are watching and listening. Some websites have 30 million hits a day on web news websites. ABC's World News Tonight has nine million viewers. You put the sheer numbers of that, and that's why the digital age has empowered a Bernie Sanders, who has reached out through basically a young crowd, and they do get their news, and they're pulled together by online uh, activity. And Donald Trump, who has no political organization, no party structure behind, and doesn't even have the establishment anywhere close to his coattails, but he can send out constant tweets. He can be seek free public, you know, uh, media in the mainstream media, and that has carried both of those figures far beyond what I think they but, could have but 20 you know, years ago. I understand Bernie Sanders. I mean, he's basically a free college education, free health care, free, 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 free. I think they say they estimate it cost 20 billion dollars or trillion dollars to to do all that. So I kind of understand that, but in Trump's case, we were all raised to not curse, to be nice, not insult people. Uh, mother would always say, if you don't have to have something nice to say about somebody, don't say anything at all. And he is violating every single one of those rules, never mind arguing with the Pope or calling John McCain a coward not a, or something. Not a war so, hero. So that's, that's how does what that makes... appealing to so many people, a third of the people voting? If I were still out on that campaign trail with my camera and my microphone and a broadcast to file for every two, three times a day, I'd spend less time looking at the lectern and listening to the political speech and more time down in the audience asking people, what are you hearing that so convinces you this is your definition of leadership? Because the presidency is a big deal. You don't get to make a lot of mistakes in that job and you don't get a lot of on-the-job training. What is it they see and hear, and what many people have said to other reporters, many of the voters have said, the establishment politicians were not able to get anything. The government was dysfunctional. Uh, things were uh, falling apart. The were government still spending too much money. Donald Trump couldn't do any worse. Yeah. Well, there's a little bit of just, uh, you know, where to go kind of thing, yeah. just to Washington, D.C. I do think there's been a negative side of this campaign that's worrisome. Uh, civil discourse has not been uh, <laughs> very genteel in the last decade, uh, that, as you and I know. But I do think that um, some of the accusations back and forth between the candidates, and uh, particularly Mr. Trump's constant kind of bullying of people, he has had terrible things to say about the young women covering his campaign, judges them very harshly. Uh, he made a cutting remark about the female candidate, Carly Fiorina, uh, about would you elect that face president? And I think there is a lack of respect that um, 
that I'm sorry this next generation is seeing it because I think in most of the elections that you and I watched in our adulthood didn't show that bipartisan disrespect, disdain for each other, and I think that's too bad. Yeah, it, it, um, it, there's a coarseness about this, uh, this business now, but have you ever seen the world more dysfunctional and chaotic than it is today? I think I look at the world now as a place where there are there are things to be feared that I don't remember fearing early on. When I grew up, the world, the, there was the communist uh, Moscow world and there was the free west. And we did have uh, nuclear bomb uh, attack drills in school to hide under your desk. Not that that we know now that would have done much good. Yeah. But when the Cold War was over and the threats to the United States broke up into little rogue states here and terrorists there, I think not knowing what your enemy out there is is a little more frightening to me than knowing that there is this superpower there which had nuclear weapons, but would it ever use them? So uh, that and the idea that the ruthlessness of some of these uh, these shadowy armies, literally starving people in Syria, beheading American journalists, and across Africa, uh, burning villages, routing fam families, uh, uh, an incredible butchery. This is the 21st century. How can this exist? Indeed. Well, Ann, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, that's another edition of Inside OSU. We'll look forward to seeing you next time, and go Pokes! Yeah.